Hello, everyone. Uh, really happy to be here to talk about APIs with us. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's gonna be good. So um, I'm Cedric. I've been uh, at Spotify for the last three years, working on API experiences, meaning creating um, Facebook application and stuff like that using our APIs. And I'm here to actually talk about something that's really dear for all of us. Uh, I hope music <laughs> and uh, about the way that um, technology has changed the music industry in the recent years and how it's going to continue to change it. The thing is that music is a part of, uh, of humanity since the creation of humanity. It's been uh, always there for us and uh, since the origin. Maybe because it's one of the only non-visual art and it has a really strong um, impact on uh, our emotions. And it's not a surprise that like 57% of the users of Spotify define themselves by a great extent by the music they listen. And it's music, it's also a universal passion. This is like uh, um, a survey we took uh, last year on the uh, US and uh, Europe. And the question was voluntarily very exclusive. Uh, which, without which one of those activities couldn't you leave? And uh, the um, people who answered had uh, three boxes to, to tick. And in 100% of cases, they ticked music. And music is with us everywhere from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. We use it to to wake up, to go to sleep, to go and have a run. We use it for weddings, for to, we use it to date. <laughs> we use it to focus when we develop APIs. And uh, it's really made of music moments. And it's also one of the most shared objects in the world. Uh, our fathers used to share vinyls with us. We were sharing CDs with our cousins uh, and uh, tapes and uh, since the nofties, <laughs> we were sharing music uh, files, and now we are sharing playlists. And more than 50% uh, of the activity on the social network revolves around music, the artist or gigs, photos, and stuff like that. <coughs> so it's really a big part of, um, of what we do. And technology in the last 50 years has changed a lot the way we consume music. Uh, and we come right now from a very bad uh, time for the music industry, with 10 years of piracy who, 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 who are really complicated for the industry. It's more than 500 billion of songs listened illegally and more than, uh, more than a loss of 50% of revenues from the, for the music industry. Streaming arrived six years ago uh, with Spotify and this really changed um, everything for the music industry and the music lovers. In a few numbers, Spotify, it's uh, a service with more than 30 million tracks available, uh, with more than 50 million active users in the world, of which 2.5 million subscribers, who pay, so, so pay 10 euros a month for uh, all the music they want, and it's now live in 58 territories, dancing. <clears throat> in a few words, it's also a help for the industries. Uh, Spotify, it's also $2 billion uh, give back to the right holders since the creation of Spotify. And in that numbers, 1 billion comes from 2014 only. So we are really like helping the music industry today. And people are using Spotify to listen, but also to create their playlist and share them with their friends. It's more than 1.5 billion playlists on Spotify and two new million playlists created every day by our users. <coughs> funny, funny figure, uh, in 2030 we streamed more than 4.5 billion hours of music. To listen that amount of music, you'd have to go around the world walking uh, more than a half a million times. Or you could go to the moon and back uh, 25,000 times. <laughs> So music data, it's what's already transforming and what's going to continue to transform uh, music and the consumption of music. Uh, it's really important and that's why uh, a few months ago Spotify bought a company called The Econest. The Econest, it's a, a company founded by uh, MIT, musicologists and engineers. This is the kind of guys who do uh, like uh, 
research on uh, North Indian music and wants to translate that into data. And today, it's really the heart of uh, the music future, how we can create that database and use it to combine hard music data and usage data to create something new for the users and the music lovers. So how APIs are changing the future of music? First, it's a very, seems very uh, simple, but it's not unmute the web. 10 years ago, there was no legal way of uh, using music on your website, like legal and open, because the rights for using music on the web were just non-existent. The streaming really created those set of rights and also helped to create the technology that helped to unmute the web. Example, imagine you are a radio station, you have all the agreements uh, you need to uh, air music on your radio waves, but, when you're on, but uh, on your website, you don't have those rights. So you are a music radio with a website that is not sonorized. The good thing here is that solution exists through streaming to help you sonorize your website. And today, this is a partnership we did with uh, Nova Radio, where we are using our API to connect all the music that's just been passed on the radio to find them and put them available immediately on the website. So with just a few clicks, you can find the, find the song and launch it. And it's another source of revenues for the artist. Same for uh, content website. For years, the community of Allociné, one of the biggest uh, movie websites in France, were uh, really asking to uh, have a, um, a soundtrack section for all the movies. But database problem, there was no database saying, uh, grouping all the soundtracks for all the movies and like putting them into uh, cases usable by websites. We did that with, our, with the Spotify music database and we could, we finally gave the opportunity to Allociné to create that, uh, that uh, soundtrack section for all the cinema and music lovers on their website. And we don't, Spotify doesn't just want like to do um, partnerships with uh, big, big, big companies. The idea is really that to create uh, simple tools for everyone to be able to uh, put music legally on their website. Uh, this is a simple JavaScript called the Music Link that can be put on any website today and which has the following effect. This is a blog article and when you will put your mouth your mouth just on this link here. Because it's music content, artist, track, genre, boom, you can, you can, shook, uh, you can uh, make up here uh, immediate player uh, on your music link. <coughs> a big, big thing about a database is actually creating the database and opening the database. It's, uh, it's the beginning of it all. If you don't have the data, you cannot do anything with it. And uh, it's something really important uh, to actually create the data, organize the data, and open the data so you can really have developers and, uh, and people from everywhere who can use them and create new stuff and be really innovative about it. A closed database is not an uh, innovative database, and that's something we really truly believe in Spotify. So I'm going to show you uh, very quickly something very fun about musical, sorry, Music profiling using the data we have on Dime. Ah. The data we have on the users' uh, consumption of music on Spotify. This is something we call Nestify. It's an internal tool we use to uh, continue and work on uh, musical profiling, and this uh, actually analyzes all the uh, all my music consumption to give me. Here we can see my favorite artist, but then to give me my actually social profile uh, as a music lover with different attributes like mainstreamness, discovery, my uh, hipster, um, hipster profile, uh, my diversity, the diversity of my listenings and everything. The good thing here is that we are using data to actually create a very advanced social graph like, like we can see here. Musical graph, like we can see here. This is all the songs and the genre I'm listening. 
and to actually go further than that, we always have that problem when we don't we don't know what to listen uh, next. So we can try to solve that like this. This is the different clusters of the that you just saw be before, the slide before. And this is my music, if I want to have a playlist based only on the things I've been listening before. My music plus some uh, new stuff I never heard before, but that are close enough to be uh, of interest to me. Or if I want a totally fresh new playlist based on my previous listening, I can just click on that. And this is only songs I never listened before that are proposed to me uh, by, uh, by the database. This is really changing uh, the music industry and our consumption. We are not forced um, to ask to uh, many friends, listen to a 10,000 radio to find new music now. My mouse is lost, sorry. Ah! Okay, <laughs> sorry. Can I have help, sir? Well, 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 uh, you know what? It's not that, uh, that bad. I wanted to also show you, this is uh, interesting for my music profile, but we can also use hard musical data to create a playlist on the fly using that thing that will not work. The internet is down. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, so that explains everything. Okay, seems back. <laughs> so this is also something that we can create through a music database. It's actually like a playlist creator. I just need here to say that I will search for, I don't know, glam rock song and some dance rock songs. The thing is that Econest has hundreds of data about every songs we have in the catalogs and hundreds of data on every artist. That's more than 2.5 million artists. And we can actually use that to create new playlists based on filters like the energy of the music I want. The energy of the music I want. Here we are. <laughs> um, why not the danceability of the music I want? I want to have only very, very danceable dance rock. Here we are. Here we are. Okay, not this one. Why not emotions? Ah, she. Okay. Well, the thing is that each time you enter a new um, a new uh, attribute on this one, your playlist automatically uh, oops your playlist will automatically update, <laughs> and that's actually a very good way of uh, discovering new music when you have access to the internet. So I'd like to get back to my presentation, but I can't find it. Back on track. So music data, as uh, you can see, can be used to uh, discover new music in very different ways through your previous listening or through something you just want to explore. But you can also use it to uh, create stories, actually. This is uh, something pretty fun. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, will it work? Yes. So this was uh, made by the Gay Pride uh, in Stockholm 
uh, it's an application to actually tell you how hetero is your playlist. The concept behind that was the, the, the Stockholm uh, Gay Pride wanted to pass the message that you're not 100% homo or hetero and wanted to illustrate that through analyzing your playlist. So you just seen that the, our API was checking all the artists in your playlist and actually gives you like a percentage of how hetero is your playlist. This has been a huge success in, uh, in Stockholm. Uh, something we created also for uh, uh, the movie Begin Again, which is a co um, romantic comedy about a couple who find themselves like 20 years later and uh, fall in love again. Uh, you probably all know Tinder. You probably all are subscribers of, of Tinder. <laughs> so the idea here was to create actually a musical Tinder. So you just connect your uh, Spotify profile we go and check all your favorite artists and your favorite music, and then, boom, we connect you with uh, people of the opposite sex or the same sex, depending on choice, with all uh, the most uh, close um, musical profi profile to yours, with the closest musical profile. We can also use uh, the data to actually explore per artist instead of uh, music. The artist explorer that is uh, available online allows you to search for genre, let's say, uh, German hip-hop or to an artist and check all the artists connected to this one. Each time you click on one of the artists, it gives you a sample of their music, uh, their popularity, and uh, yeah, the, the, the most listened track of the artist. So it's a really good tool to explore, actually, artists based on your favorite artist. We can also just play with the artist like that and creating playlists from uh, what connects, uh, what connects uh, Wagner to Alice Cooper. I have no idea, but maybe I'm curious to know. So uh, Boil the Frog is actually an application that lets you enter any artist in case one and case two, and we will create a playlist going from one artist to the other. I've tried uh, this morning something going to Plastic Bertrand uh, to Jay-Z, and the results were pretty amazing. And I really invite you to uh, try that for yourself. It's really, really fun. Where is the drama? It's something a little more uh, inspirational. The idea here is to actually um, find the drama, the emo moment in a song when the emotion is really, really going up. Uh, I wanted to give you a demo, but since I had so many problems connecting to my uh, Spotify account and back, uh, I will just give you the link and you can try it for yourself. It's really, really, really fun. <coughs> API, it's not uh, only uh, a database question. The, the, when I was talking about opening the APIs, it's also giving the opportunities to new ecosystem and new um, products to be created around your APIs. And uh, today, we are really starting to do that. This is uh, a program called Serendipity available online too, that uses uh, the usage data to pinpoint uh, the people from uh, cities that plays the exact same song at the exact same moment. So Serendipity is actually just every 10 seconds uh, showing you two people connected from one point and another point in the world who are listening to the exact same thing, same moment. Really fun, and uh, it's really like a very nice artistic project. Pacemaker, it's also uh, it's a DJ application on an iPad that allows you to use any songs in the Spotify uh, database to actually mix them together. You know what? Uh, videos talks better than words. <laughs> so uh, you can actually just go on, uh, on the app, Pacemaker, choose songs, there is no sound. We are. Yeah. And uh, so make loops, uh, changing, uh, change songs to the other uh, with a simple slider. And this has been released almost a year ago. And it's a really, really good tool for a lot of DJs who doesn't have to carry all their uh, database with them anymore. You know, they just need to have an iPhone, a good connection, and then you can start to mix pretty much anywhere. And the funny thing is that
it's not only uh, digital application and uh, all things numeric. Uh, you, you've probably seen that recently uh, Spotify has partnered with Uber uh, on a global level. And you can actually know when you call your Uber, uh, shoot your own playlist to the cab to actually continue to enjoy your music everywhere. And it's really something important about how APIs are reshaping the industry. It's that we are now able to connect the music to everything. A few years ago, to listen to music, you had to have a CD player. Uh, then a few months ago, you, you used to have a mini disc player. Then a few days after that, <laughs> MP3 players were happening in the market. And, uh, but for all that, you needed a dedicated device for it. And uh, today, through the API, you can basically, in a few years, we will be able to play music from our windows, and they will choose music depending on the weather, it, the weather outside. So it's really about putting the music everywhere. We have developed this, uh, some hardware called Spotify Connect that actually uh, allows to use streaming in almost any speaker, a uh, lot of brand of car, uh, in some uh, the wristband for the runners, very, very important uh, usage, uh, the Apple CarPlay and everything. So it's really about where do you want music to come from? Yeah, what do you <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's really about uh, answering to that question. We can basically play music from everything now, and this is really uh, something we want to do in the future, and the uh, industry is going to do in the future. Music, stop limiting the music to your just, just a device, and just a mood. Um, so, yeah, again, just to sum up everything, API are really changing the access to music, it's really a matter of opening the database, of letting anyone use them to create new usage and to create new ecosystems. And um, yeah, this will change the way we listen to music, we consume music, and actually the way we discover new music. And this is, with your help, only a start. Few questions music from customers maybe yeah or users <laughs> so can you raise your hand again yeah hi thank you for the uh, talk very interesting um, it seems from from what you're telling us uh, what Spotify try to do is create quite a a closed ecosystem where you're targeting specific use cases with specific partners like uber like fitness bands, that kind of thing. The other thing that's been interesting about Spotify in the news recently was the Taylor Swift case where she's kind of pulled from it. And, uh, you know, and where do you see Spotify's response to that kind of thing with, from open uh, networks who are, you know, able to expose access to data and content uh, in a mo more open format? What's so Spotify's answer to that? I'm sorry, I just didn't get the last part because the sound is not that good well, I'm there. Saying you, <laughs> I'm coming you, to you. You're doing lots of deals with... with uh, yeah. With companies, yeah, to get Spotify and obviously to you know increase the return and you know get get music out there, mm -hmm. but artists are kind of uh, some artists are pulling out of that and are looking to go down a more open channel. So what's uh, Spotify's take on that? I mean, do you see that as a threat? And do you have a, your API strategy? You know, is is quite closed. Do you have a, a response to sort of opening it up more? Um, the thing is, you are talking about artists. I'm what the artists are taking out of yeah, it. I'm just interested in the, in, in, in the strategy side of things, because what you've been talking about there is very much about functionality and, and usability of the music. I'm thinking more about the, the, the value chain back to the artists. So, um, you know, is it all about just getting, getting the music out there, getting it into different devices? It's as simple as that. It's really about, uh, the thing it's about creating a new uh, way for music industry to be back on its feet, kind of. So the more music people will be listening, the more money will be uh, sent back to the industry, to the artist, and ultimately to, uh, to the good health of the music industry. Um, when I was talking about the $2 billion uh, paid to the right holders today, uh, so since the creation of Spotify, it's really a number that it's only the beginning and growing. The more Spotify is gonna be used, and the more Spotify and all the streaming service will be connected to everything that surrounds us, the more 
music will be listened. The thing is that music is already being listened a, mo a lot, a lot, a lot. We just want to get rid of the piracy because piracy doesn't pay anything. It doesn't bring the technology forward. So it's all about changing that bit, that, that screw in the machine to try to make it work again. If I, if I can uh, add to your question, maybe the question was more how we partner with Spotify. Do, does the API is first really open and we can do what we want? Absolutely. Then, Absolutely. then we have to agree a partnership. So it was kind of the question. Okay. Yeah. yeah, on this angle. Perfect. Uh, in the, you know what? I'm just going to put back the small bit.ly that, that was on my uh, previous slide. On this one, you have all the informations. I gathered everything uh, in a Google Doc with all the access to the, to the keys, the API key to Spotify, to the Econest, uh, some examples of what we can do. And actually, Spotify has a really big policy of opening data and letting, uh, letting developers use that. It's, uh, everything is automa automatized. <laughs> you can access all the music data uh, really easily. All about, about the partnerships, uh, it's always a question of discussing uh, all partnerships one-to-one. -one. We obviously have a lot of incoming demands for partnerships. We have a team dedicated to that that are really happy to discuss with, uh, with the developers about new ideas and new projects. Thank you. One more question? Yeah, well, two, two questions on the front. And it will stop here. Thank you. Nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nicolas Brie from uh, Orange. <laughs> Nicolas Brie from Orange Innovation. A simple question. You mentioned music everywhere. Do you have uh, um, some unexpected example or funny example of uh, connected objects already using um, Spotify API and enabling you to listen to music on your bike or? on your toothbrush or on your scale, I don't know, whatever. Well, actually, it's a funny thing because uh, Daniel Egg, the founder of Spotify, uh, is working on, he has a house that he, he he's like the Batman of, uh, of his own house. He tries to put music in into almost everything. Uh, there's a funny example, uh, he's talking in a, in a news article about music coming from the light bulbs and stuff like that. So he's really passionate about using music in every object. Uh, and the thing is that we have a SDK set, uh, development kit that can help you to, to play music from anything. So I don't have like a precise example, except of the, of the one of the light bulb, but uh, anything you can think of. You have to visit his house. Yeah, sir? You have to visit his house. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so last question. Hi. Um, you may have heard about Acoustic Brain Z that just released um, three giga of uh, data about music, low level and high level uh, data. Yeah. Um, and all this under a CC0 uh, license. So what's your positioning regarding that? And uh, would you also do the same as they release this data, but they also invite the crowd to uh, to give back more data, to increase this database, to crowdsource more information. Yes. So what's your positioning uh, regarding it? The wheel of, uh, the wheel of uh, opening data is uh, really strong at Spotify, and this is something that's going to be continuously uh, growing and opening. We are releasing a lot of um, new APIs uh, every day. Uh, recently, the Econest actually um, released on the, on the, on the website. <coughs> the whole access to the test profile I was showing. And now there are some data that are really confidential for uh, confidentiality questions for the users and some strategic, strategic questions. But we are releasing as much data and opening as much data as we can because this is really, and it's not just uh, for the talk, it's really something important uh, for the company because this is where you can have the most innovation, opening the data. So yes, it's going to open more and more and more and more, and all the tool will be uh, more and more precise and strong. Maybe not yet, but this is not for me to answer, actually.
Yeah. So thank you. So Francois Bourdon this morning said that uh, streaming is, is killing iTunes and kind of not killing iTunes, but is, is the new model for music. And uh, we're glad that you present us uh, music everywhere. So a warm applause for Cedric. Applause.